Hello friends and welcome to Escaping the Mouse with your host, me, Brooke Roll. All right, if you watched my last video, you know that I began building a base for something. I didn't tell you what it was and I kind of challenged people to try and guess what it was uh, by giving you a couple of clues what, uh, of what its function was to actually guess what it was. Well, today we're gonna let you know what that is. Let's take a look at our project. So this is the platform that I built for our last video. And as I said, I was a little secretive as what this was exactly for. And I gave you some clues that it had to be able to support about 500 pounds of weight and that it was gonna live in an outdoor environment. But I didn't really say what it was. Now I'm gonna tell you what it is. I've decided that I wanna put a rain barrel in my backyard uh, underneath one of the downspouts to capture some of the rainwater that collects when it does rain, because we do get some rain, and um, I thought that would be a great way to, you know, irrigate my plants, especially if we have another dry summer like we did last year. Now you may wonder why did I build a platform when I could just set the, the barrel itself on the ground. Well, here's the reason: the rain barrel I have has a spout on the front of it at the bottom, and I wanted to lift the barrel high enough off the ground so that the spout would allow me to put in a five gallon bucket under it. And so that's solely what the purpose of the, of the platform is, to lift the rain barrel off the ground. Now there's been a little bit of a setback with this in is that I had originally planned on buying it at a particular company. And that particular company, when I placed the order, or when I tried to place the order, they were talking about a two month lead time. I don't wanna wait till June to get this thing going. I wanna get this thing going in the next week or so. But I figured, you know what, there's got to be some other company in Waco that has something similar and uh, I could use. Now, there's a company called Atwoods that's sort of a farming and country living kind of store in the area. And they have rain barrels in stock, but theirs were kind of boring and kind of ugly. They were just 55-gallon drums that they were selling for rain collection. Uh, the one I got, or that I tried to get, um, actually was made out of plastic, but it was designed to look like an actual barrel and it looked pretty nice. But with that lead time, that was just going to be too long. So I looked around, it turns out Home Depot has them. And so I ordered one from Home Depot. It looks like this and it's going to arrive next week. And that's what our, uh, rain barrel is going to be. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to finish this up, finish this video up, uh, at that point by modifying one of the drown downspouts on the rain gutters to feed into the barrel. But today we need to finish up the platform. And the platform, as you recall, is made out of two by sixes because that would make it mean nice and strong. And I stained it to make it look really nice. And I actually think it looks pretty nice. Uh, I'm trying to decide right now which side is going to be the front and which side is going to be the back. Uh, but you know, I think it looks pretty nice. Actually, I think probably this is going to be the front. That's kind of a, that looks really nice. But this isn't going to last long uh, in its current state out in the elements. So what I want to do is I'm going to put some wood sealer on here, probably four or five coats of wood sealer on here to protect this thing from the elements. And that's what we're going to do today. So this is the location I've chosen here in the backyard for the positioning of my rain barrel. I'm going to literally put it right here on this wall. And I'm going to tap into this little downspout here. This normally kind of feeds out into the front yard and then flows onto the driveway. I'm going to tap into that and we're going to run it down to here. And uh, that should give me a nice long amount of a row of rain gutter here that will feed my, uh, my rain barrel. Because this is, you know, almost the entire length of the house in the backyard. So probably clearly about a third of the total roof space in the yard uh, uh, will feed water into the gutters, which ultimately will go into my barrel. Now, one of the things I like about the barrel I've chosen is it's designed that I can expand. So in the future, if I decide, for instance, I want to add another rain barrel, I could put it right next to the first one and then put some plumbing on the side of the barrels and connect them together. Right now, uh, current one barrel is going to give me about 50 gallons of rainwater when full and I can expand as much as I want. I could put two, three, four barrels back here if I want and have them all tied together and have lots and lots and lots of water. So. That's uh, sort of the plan on that. Uh, like I said, we'll see how well it works and maybe we'll expand it at some point, but that's where we are gonna start. So let's get, get back to finishing the platform. 
Oh, and it's been a rainy day for the past couple days, so I've gotten about three inches of rain so far in the past four days or so. And the pool is, at this point, major overflow. So that's why it's uh, leaking right now. I'm gonna have to drop the water level. But this sort of inspired me even further to get going on this because, you know what? That was a lot of water that just went down the drain. So this is what I'm going to use for my uh, waterproofing finish on there. This is uh, stuff I've used before. Um, actually, I think I've built uh, that ladder stand in the backyard and I waterproof that using this stuff. It's good stuff. It, uh, it goes, uh, goes on pretty transparent, dries, and it's got a good solid uh, thick coating to it. And it does a good job of protecting uh, things from the environment. So. I'm going to do probably four or five coats on this, let it dry per for every coat, and I'll show you how that looks as we go along. All right, I know it doesn't look like much, and that's to be expected. That's the goal of this thing. It's supposed to remain transparent, but that's one coat. Like I said, we're going to do several coats on this, so I'm going to let this dry a little bit, and then we'll come back and do another one, and I'll show you what that looks like. All right, about an hour has passed. Um, this is dried pretty well. It doesn't feel sticky anymore. Uh, so I'm going to put another coat on that and I'll let you see what that looks like. All right, we're two coats into this and starting to look pretty good. Um, I think I'll probably be able to get away with just one more coat of this and I think we'll probably be good for a while. Now, while this last section has been uh, drying, I've been thinking about the, the heads of these lag bolts. And there's something I've done in the past that I think looks really sharp on woodwork when I'm using bolts and stuff like that to connect things together. And that is I remove the bolts and paint them black. And I'm halfway thinking I may do that with these too. Because I think this thing will look awesome. Uh, you know, if the bolts are, are black, they'll, they'll stand out and it'll look really cool. So I think I may end up doing that. But... Before I do that, I'm going to put one more coat of uh, water seal on this, and that should finish this part of the project. Okay, so that's coat number three. Um, I think it looks pretty good. I think we're going to be good here with this now. Like I said, I still want to take those bolts out and paint them, because I think that'll make this thing look really sharp. It'll pop. It'll look uh, like it's a really nice piece of uh, addition to the yard. But, yeah, that's kind of the final thing here. I'm going to let it dry a little bit, and I'll show you a little bit. Uh, what it looks like after that and I may even pull the bolts out tonight and paint them So I'll catch up with you in a little bit All right, so the top of this thing is dry now with three coats. I think that's going to be enough for it I know it looks really shiny in here, but that's more of the camera doing that. There's a little bit of reflection, but um, I think this looks pretty good. This should hold up now for a long time now I told you earlier that I was thinking I was going to remove the screws and paint them black so I have removed most of the screws now. I got a couple of them I'm leaving in there to keep the thing together because it's it's the bolts that are the only thing that are holding them together. But I've taken all the bolts and all the washers and spray painted them and we're gonna put them back in there and I think that'll just make this thing look really sharp. So maybe too sharp for something that's just gonna be sitting in the backyard, but Never mind, it doesn't matter. It's still going to look great, I think. So I'm going to let these dry a little bit. We'll put them in. We'll take the remaining screws out, get them painted, and this should be the end of this project. So I'll let you know how that looks in a little bit. All right, so this is the finished product. Uh, it's had plenty of time to dry now, and as it turns out, it did decide to paint all of the lag bolts. I think they look pretty cool. Makes it look uh, kind of uh, funky looking, right? But yeah, that's the final product. We're gonna put that out in the backyard and this will be the base for our rain barrel. Now, it's gonna be a few days before we get back to that because as I mentioned earlier, um, I just ordered the rain barrel and it's not due to get here until Saturday. So you're gonna see a couple other vlogs uh, it for the next couple days and then we'll revisit the rain barrel thing when it arrives so i think that's all that i have for today thank you as always for watching and i'll see you next time on escaping the mouse good night